Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're gonna talk more about pausing a 3D print, but I'm gonna talk about a couple of different common slicers and how you would do it or not do it with them. Um, after the last video, I've had a lot of comments. Uh, several people say that they use a different method for putting hardware embedded in parts, things like uh, slicing the part in half and gluing it together afterwards or um, using other slicers. So I wanted to cover a bit of that in this video. We're not gonna be doing any design work, but we're using the same part. So the first slicer on the table here is the Cura slicer. Now the Cura slicer and the Prusa slicer are sort of the two basis for pretty much most of the other ones on the market. The Kira Slicer is actually the exact one that I used for the Ender 7. That's the, the Creality sort of rebranded it as their own with just a little bit of UI tweaks. It's very good, clean UI. There's not a whole lot to it, but it doesn't give us the ability to pause during the printing process by selecting a layer. It doesn't have K1 Max support by default, so it really doesn't offer or bring anything to the table for me. If there is a way to do it, it has to be done manually to the best that I can tell with the Cura Slicer. Moving on to the next most common slicer, and that would be the Prusa Slicer. Now, of course, uh, this one is, again, the foundation for a lot of other builds, but mainly this one offers up the ability to right-click and add a pause. Now, one thing that this does nicely is it gives you the option to add a message. None of the other ones that I found give you that option, but it doesn't have K1 Max support by default. So it's the reason that I don't use this. I don't really love the UI on this. And there are other slicers that are based on this that I think are better. Uh, things like the Orca slicer have more options, but if you want to pause using the Prusa slicer, that's how you do it. Uh, the next one up is the Orca slicer which I just mentioned is based on Prusa Slicer, and it does have the same option. So you basically go and pick your layer and add a pause. It doesn't give you the option to do a message, but this does have K1 Max support by default. Um, and there are some reasons I'll talk about in a little bit why I don't use this, but I don't really love the UI. I don't like the way that it's laid out. I think that it's got good options and I have printed to the K1 Max from it before but I just simply prefer the older Creality print for my own uses. Uh, so next up would be the newer Creality print. Uh, so this is the updated version. This does have the ability, again, to select a layer when you're previewing and add a pause. Um, nothing else to it. We don't get to really add any messages or anything like that. It's just gonna put pause in the line of code at that layer. And lastly is the Creality print that I used in the video. Now this one does not have the ability to manually add a pause as we talked about. It gives you the layers, you can watch the G code on the right side. And then we had to go in and manually add that pause text wherever we wanted to stop it. Um, so again, to the best of my knowledge, this is based on the Cura slicer as was uh, the current version, even though it looks a bit more like the Orca slicer. But in the back end, it's basically, it's the same thing. It's just kind of rebranded here. So let's take a look at the G code. I don't have G code for everything. The uh, Prusa slicer and the Cura slicer didn't have K1 Max support. So the code will be a little bit different, but um, you'll notice here that the Prusa slicer, which gave us the option to add that message, puts an M117 code inside of the line. And it adds a comment before that says pause print. One thing that I noted with this slicer is it lists the layer changes and not the actual layer numbers. You can see it gives us the Z height for those layers, but it doesn't actually tell you what layer you're on. Now, if we move on to the Orca slicer, which did have K1 Max support, it does the same thing. It does layer change instead of actually adding layer. And if I go and I search for um, pause, it actually puts pause in the code. And again, that's how we had to pause the K1 Max uh, based on the, the firmware that it's running. If you're running different firmware, you may see M0, you may see M117. Both of those will accept that text note, which should display on the screen. But you can see here, it doesn't tell us what layer it is. It just tells us the, the layer height. Now, the newer version of uh, the Creality software I, I don't really love it. I'll talk about that in just a second, but just to note, 
the way that the code was outputted from the previous version, the version four of the Creality software, it actually lists our layered numbers. And I prefer to see that in the code. It still gives us the Z height. So we know Z 16.28 is where we're pausing, but it actually gives us the layer number. And when I'm figuring this stuff out, figuring out how many, um, how thick the part is when I need to pause it, I wanna see that layer number in there. So just quickly to kind of finish off this conversation, when I'm 3D printing, I don't really want a project. I don't wanna go in and have to figure out a bunch of settings and I don't want it to be a complex thing. So I really prefer a simplified UI. This UI here for the older Creality print has everything I need. I slice it and I send it to a USB. I don't use the Creality cloud print and I, I'm not connected to the machine directly. Uh, because of that, this is the easiest way for me to take my prints and the parameters that I've configured and, and get them to the machine. Looking at the newer Creality print, I think the UI is better than the Orca slicer, at least for my own purposes, but I really don't love the way that they divided everything up. They, uh, they have options for the nozzle and the plate type up here, which is helpful, but then all the tools are displayed across the top. The materials are listed over here. And then over here, we've got options for the different uh, layer sizes. And then we have to go through all these settings to kind of configure them. And every once in a while, I'll notice that the speed settings won't be displayed based on what's selected on the screen and, and where I'm at in that process. So I just don't love the way that it's laid out. It's a bit more tricky for me to figure out all the settings that I need even though there probably are more advanced settings in here. I did some test prints from the newer Creality print and the older one, and I don't see any better results out of them. There's nothing that's really changed in the way that the machine's moving. So for me, having the ability to pause at a specific layer is nice, but it's easy enough for me to just put that in the G code at layer 80 whenever I need to. Now, of course, my process is different than everybody else. So whatever works best for you, then be sure to use that. But hopefully now you can see that the Prusa Slicer, the Orca Slicer, and the newer Creality Print Slicer do all have the ability to add that layer pause directly in the software without having to manually mess with your G code. Now, if you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.